sisters know it. You can't look to nobody at this particular time but yourself. You are the key. Is it not written in the law that you are God's? What's this? Bailas? Bailas. Bailas. That's when it came? Okay, well, thank you. That's when it came. Bailas. All right. Lavado. Luigi. Atama. Oduwado. Koa. Oduwadi. Leoa. Goduba. Biwasta. Um. Amethyst, Shaudagate, Yakaipa, Bozon, Yabez, Fleamon, Zimri, Cooperini, Billfrog. Um, hold on, let's see, uh, let's get a few more, I don't want to, we just get a, 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 a few more as we go on. Osa, I say, head heavy, I say, new, had it, my heart too, my mind too. Let's go into what's going down and what just happened a week ago. Uh, a week ago. First of all, I want to show you this. I want to show you this. Uh, you know, when I went to Keiko last night to get this put on the acetate, uh, put on this, this on the overheads, overlay so I can show you. But I want to show you this particular picture. But we didn't get no help. The people act like this, you know. We went and went in there, and uh, I was looking at this sister, was two, a sister and a brother up in there, and we was asking for help, and they was acting like we killed their mom, they mom or their parents. <laughs> what the hell you want? I mean, you know, it's really. I was like, no, let's just get the hell up out of here, you know. So, you know, so. I want to show you this picture right here of these particular people. Now, I guess we're just going to have to put it on the camera. You see that? Can you, you got a good copy of that? You got a good copy of that? And down here, these are black African people. I want to show this to everybody, get a good look. I know some of your eyes uh, might not hold up, but I want to show you this. I want to show you this. I want to show you this particular part right here. It's black people, and you would think that these black figures that we're going to put on the paper again, put on, on, on so we put this on, so I want, to, I want you to get a good copy of it. Get a good copy of it. So we so if you don't see it, you'll see it on the video. You got it? You got it? Huh? Okay. These are African people, but just so happen to live in Iraq. That's amazing. We can pass these around. These are African people that live in Iraq. Now they're going to tell you that Iraq is, they're going to tell you that Iraq's African descent keeps tradition alive. No, these are not African descent. These are the original Iraqis. All right. And they will see, this is how they run the shit on you. You thinking these are people that even got a pattern where they migrate. They didn't migrate from nowhere. You see what I'm saying? And although they do, they did, Tell you read between the lines because they show you it's right there at uh, right up under the horn of Africa, and basically it's just.
just like the book that's written in the 1930s, which is the key, Drusilla Dundee Houston's book. Wonderful Ethiopians in the ancient Kushite Empire. And they tell you that the Kush, uh, that Kush also inhabited or uh, was also Arabia, Iraq, or uh, what you call Persia, Babylonia, or uh, Babylon, on it up into your whole East India. Your whole India. Right. All of that was a Kushite empire. Exactly. This sister that you see right here is the Kushite. Hindu Kush. It's interesting, even in the movie Alexandria, they said it three, four times. Hindu Kush, Hindu Kush. And at the end in the movie Alexandria, he got his ass whipped, and they don't let people know. He went up in the Indian and got his ass whipped. <laughs> Big old nigga on an elephant. He got his ass whipped. But they got, you know, they bring it, they finally bring out the truth. Mr. Man that conquered the world, no, he went up in India and he went too black. You see, he conquered Kemet, but Kemet had several invasions. But he went up in, but he, then they also say even Chancellor Williams said, but he wouldn't dare go down into Ethiopia. Because they said, why? They said, because Alexandria, Alexander couldn't bear the thought of him getting his behind whip by an African queen. So he didn't go down in there because he said, no, nah, this is the seat. At that time, that part of Kush was the seat of black power. In Ethiopia, Kush, Punt. You see what I'm saying? All that particular aspect of that land, which you call Somalia, Ethiopia, or whatever, was the seat of black power. He couldn't stand the thought of going up in there and getting his ass whipped. Kemet was the daughter or the child of Ethiopia had grown weak because it was on the border. You see what I'm saying? So he didn't dare. Why, did, why didn't he go on down in Ethiopia or Kush? You see what I'm saying? Because he knew, uh-uh. There's certain places I can't go. But he went to another part of Kush, which is India, and got his ass whipped. But what I'm trying to tell you is this particular part here that you see these African people, they will tell you that they came from here, which is the Horn of Africa, and yes, they were, because that's the whole Kush act. What they don't tell you here is that Arabia, Iraq, Persia, Afghanistan, all of that was a Kushite people. You see what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, even in the, 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 the part of Muhammad, if there was ever one, even the part of Muhammad, his father, and it, made, and it was interesting, because his father was called what? A Kushite Arabian. A Kushite Arabian. Y'all all right? Yeah. So, so this, is, this, this is very key, but I want to put this out here to say they are in Iraq because they understood that this was the last remnants of pre-dynastic Egypt that they hadn't conquered. And that's what this thing is about. Over there with 3,000 dig sites in Iraq. While that's going on, we have this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the new face of terrorism. New face of terrorism. From John Muhammad, John Malvo, to this particular brother here, Brian G. Nichols. Now, when they blew up the buildings at the World Trade Center, we knew it was going somewhere, and I said, you know, this is leading back to us. So let's go into the science on this that went down because this has nothing to do with what went down last week. That was just the catalyst. You see what I'm saying? They had to enact something and they needed a certain event to enact it. And so this is Manchurian Candidate, MK Ultra. Y'all all right? Let me go into the science on this uh, and show you what's going on. Show you what's going down right now. Um, are we also making a, a, a CD, right? Yes, sir. With this thing here that we're gonna market uh, for the people. It's, it's some interesting here also too. Um, isn't it funny? Cause you know, um, Dan Rather's gone, and your boy Ter uh, Tom Brokaw is gone, and Peter Jennings is getting ready to go. But before Peter, Je Peter Jennings went. He did a whole special on UFOs. 
Now, you know, they, you know, they used to have a lot of people do their UFO stuff, but they never had their major broadcast. Um, people do that, and uh, on, they had a whole special on UFOs on ABC in February, Black History Month. <laughs> <laughs> very key very key see you thinking that's a bad day uh, they gave us the shortest day of the month that's the only day that's the only time it has how many days 28. 28 days 28 is the magical number of the spiritual feminine aspect the cycle is what a 28 day cycle your menstrual cycle you see what I'm saying they had a whole movie 28 days later. You see what I'm saying? Uh, this stuff that's inside of you, they say it came out of the blood. Watch your blood. Because it's going to come out of your blood. You know, I talk about these figures that's just that's unbreakable. An unbreakable figure is a person who, I talk about a guy named Bob C.C. who went out and got hit by a car um, at 62 years old. He just turned 65. Um, on the 11th of, uh, of February, but he was 62 of us, yeah. And I think he went and got hit by a car, and the car ran over him, and he crawled out from under the exhaust pipe and went up the street to his sister and came back, and he was drunk, <laughs> came back and he was looking for the people that got hit by the car, and it was like, well, it's you that got hit by the car because you got on a white outfit and there's car tires all over it. <laughs> car tracks. And he ended up, um, and, he, and so he ended up, I said, well, did you get any bones broke? He said, no, I had a cut on my face with the heel up the next day. So that whole movie, Unbreakable, we talking about with Bruce Willis and all, you see what I'm saying? Samuel L. Jackson. And Samuel L. Jackson, they had Samuel L. Jackson as the weak bone, but you just have to switch it up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's for Samuel L. Jackson, because if you look at the movie, you will see Samuel L. Jackson sitting down with an afro, and over his head is an Egyptian stella, a stone slab, with hieroglyphics, which means you the unbreakable one. You see, now we got another one. Uh, this brother right here is uh, apparently unbreakable. He came and gave me all some remarkable shit about him. I'm like, nigga, <laughs> you one of the folks. You one of the folks. You are one of the ones that's supposed to return, the return of the great old ones. You said, well, when the great, you're going to be looking out here for the great old ones, and you are the return of the great old ones. You see what I'm saying? And what I mean by that is this. We got so much stuff in our black community. The spirits came up and said this. They say, look. All them people out there that have been going to jail and getting killed and all this kind of thing, those people were sacrificed so that we can get this one group of people that will be the pinnacle of the whole world. So, it, so the black community has to go through a, 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 a plight because produced out of it is the ultimate of the human aspect, the mutation, and you are the ones. I've been saying this for a while, but you gotta, you got to start listening because it's going to be you. And it could very well be you at the spring equinox or the summer solstice. But from this time on, how long, however we get, how long we get, you're going to start metamorphosizing. Your body is going to start going through strange things. Look out for being, break, look out when you, whenever you start breaking out in hives. Anybody been breaking out in the hives? I, you know, uh, uh, you one minute, you know, something just come up on you and you got hives, and then the next minute it's gone. You're gonna, uh, you, a lot of you are going to be going through this in the next couple of months, couple of years. Breaking out in hives. That's because your body is slowly metamorphosizing and mutating into an immortal entity. Y'all all right? Now, dealing with this and dealing with the government, you must understand this, and let me give you the science on this. I'll give you the science on this that's going on. Since 2001, the, since 2001, the government has imposed martial law in America, and it's been added to your airports. All your airports have been under martial law or homeland security since 2001. You see what I'm saying? It's just that that martial law that was at the Air Force, and anybody been traveling, if you go out there, you realize you don't have no rights. And if you run, you might the wrong way. You might get that billy back across your head, and you don't have no rights because based on the uh, terrorist bill, which is the bill uh, the brother brought me the Patriot Act. Now here, now you know they tell you the Patriot Act, and you go on TV say, yeah, they passed on the Patriot Act. And they give you a Patriot Act, 
And the Patriot Act is, it's this thick, and you might read the first page. You understand what I'm saying? You might read the first page. It's like this. Why is it, when you go crazy in the army, anybody in the military, what do they call that? AWOL. Uh-uh, not, not, going, not going missing. When you go crazy in the army, what do they call it? No, they call it a Section 8. <laughs> Whenever you poor and ain't got no money, what do they call it? Section 8. Go back and look at MASH. You remember Clay? Clay used to wear the women clothes. He was always trying to get a Section 8 to get out of the army. So obviously this thing was in effect long before welfare and all this kind of thing here. Why is it that they would take something that is a crazy person in the military realm and for you to get government assistance, they would also call it Section 8. Huh? They would also call it Section 8. Go back and get the movie 12 Monkeys. When Brad Pitt in the movie when he's in the crazy house, he said, if you don't consume, you are the enemy. The enemy now is what Delva Blair calls useless eaters. You see what I'm saying? You are the, you are the enemy. You see, if you don't consume, you are the enemy. So Section 8 means that if you are poor, there's something wrong with you. Remember I said that? I said about four years ago. If you don't have no money, you're not human when it comes to this white boy. That's what capitalism does. You see, so you got to ask yourself this question. When you go crazy in the military, why do they call, they call it Section 8? Why do they call when you go get government assistance, they call it Section 8? That means that they have categorized a certain people, <coughs> a certain people as the enemy, a certain people that has gone ballistic, as this new word, a certain people that have, that, uh, a certain people that as a result, the technology is a motherfucker. It'll sneak up on you, man. <laughs> you know. As a result, they have, and even Reagan said it one time. He said the homeless people, they was talking to a lot of homeless. He said they, they, if they're homeless, they're crazy. <laughs> and although, you know, they had a lot of crazy people out there, they were giving a certain characteristic of a people that they were going to deal with at a certain time. You see what I'm saying? And those particular people will have something to do with terrorism. Now before I get into that, I need to get into this. I was in New York and I told the people, I said every time we eat out, me and, me and the goddess, you know, it was, it was the, the sister, it was the queen, and then she came up and said, motherfucker, it better be the goddamn goddess the next time you get on the table. <laughs> so, the goddess, you see what I'm saying? Help me <laughs> convey this shit. <laughs> anyway, every time we eat out, it is not a black person. We get sick. I told the people in New York, I said, every time I eat out now, I get sick if it ain't a black person. Now they got a place called the West End Mall in Atlanta. And they ain't got but one black person left in the whole mall that's cooking. And that's the only place we can eat. You see what I'm saying? And everything else, if it's any other kind of race, we get sick. Sprint said, look, because we know it's been going on for the last 30 years. Mainly, it became in fruition in the 80s with mass amount of all these particular foreigners, especially the Asians. They come into your community. Those are assassins. The white man don't even have to be around. The Asians, or these particular people that's cooking the food, are assassins. This is also like, like what's the name? So this is a warfare man, and, and the battle for this part can be through your mouth. You see what I'm saying? These are assassins. Now it's interesting here because I was in Baltimore, Maryland in, in, in November of 2003 doing a lecture 
And at the end of the lecture, I said, um, I'm hungry, man. What you, you got the thing on this? They say, hey, ain't nothing open at this time of night but the Asians. <laughs> I said, well, you got to go someplace and say, no. There's one on every corner. Just like there's a check cashing place and a liquor store yeah. and a church. They're all the same. <laughs> there's one on every corner. There's an Asian place on every corner. Everybody, and we, we went downtown Baltimore, Maryland, and all the black people was walking around with canes, limping, and all fucked up. <laughs> but the Asian assassins. Now, Dr. Devil Blair went out to call out to California, he was on the radio out there, and he mentioned about a Chinese or Asian, and this is the high end now, this is the high end. Now if they're doing this at the high end, what you think they're doing to you in the hood with Bruce Leroy's? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I, he, he called out, he was on, on the radio out in California, and he talked about how there's a place in Atlanta, at North Point Mall, way out in Alpharetta, ain't nothing out there but high-end white folks. And that's where all you big-time stars that moved, they live out in that area. And he talked about how in the restaurant, an Asian restaurant, he said, Ludacris, um, Usher, Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston, even Puff Daddy, um, who else? He said, all these particular stars that moved in that area was eating out of the restaurant and they were serving them cats and rats. Cats and rats. Come to find out, it was in USA Today, I heard. Now this white boy so bold, he said, fuck it, I'll put it in USA Today. And I said, wait a minute, hold on now. He came and said this in February in California, and I said, well, it's ironic that I was in, New in, in, in Brooklyn, and I told the people every time we eat any place that's not ours, we get sick. You see what I'm saying? And he also mentioned, he said, I know some damn chicken when I taste it. This ain't no chicken. Now, it's interesting here, you had the underground Atlanta that reopened as a new underground in 1989, and they had 60 to 75,000 people passed in there in one weekend. But some reason, because it was built on a, it's, it's a slave market, and they build it up every four or five years, it becomes all black again, and they couldn't do anything. So Disney wanted to buy the underground in the matter, but they said, no, nah, ain't nothing down there but niggas. So when we go into the underground, it was used to be one store where the Asian have a, 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 a toothpick and giving you this. Try this, try this. Every station in the food court has got these toothpicks and the stuff is extremely cheap. You know, uh, hell, you don't even have to pay nothing. You can just walk to each section and buy some shit off that, off the, uh, off the uh, toothpick and be full by the time you get round. Because everybody is about 10 businesses and all of them are out there handing you shit. I'm like, well, hell. A nigga can just go up in the end and ain't pay nothing. Just go to each one and get the toothpick and shit. By the time you get back, you'll be full. But the point about it here is, it's not chicken. <laughs> now, it's interesting because a lot of the melanin research is based on, with white folks researching it, was based on rats. You know, that, that, you know, that mouse, that white mouse, which is a mutant, which is a clone mouse because there's no such thing as a white mouse in your house or a white roach or, white roach or whatever. I'm not even I see an albino roach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying at all, you know. <laughs> which, and which, which, which leave me to, I got to get a white man a hand on this. I was staying in an apartment complex <laughs> and it don't matter how clean you are. If you're in the apartment complex, a nigga down the hall got the roach, you got it. <laughs> That white boy in 1997 came up with a, some of the stuff looked like um, sugar daddies, a little Carmel stuff. Oh. And it kills everything combat. It's combat. walking. Now they got it, combat has it. It's the same stuff. <laughs> and so they got the technology. They ain't no sense you fuck around with no roaches. Because they, they had the technology in 97. And now you can go buy it and find all of that combat stuff. It killed everything walking. But the point I'm trying to make here is, a lot of your melanin research was based on rats. <coughs> it is interesting that the CDC in Atlanta, every day at 3 o'clock, 
they have something like seven or eight hundred students from high school that work at the Center of Disease Control in Atlanta. Now, what is it now? Hey, that's a good job, shit. You don't leave them about a good job. This is the Center of Disease Control. But you gotta have a top security clearance and all this to get in there. But well, why is it that they got about seven or eight hundred high school students working for the CDC in the afternoon? All of them the so-called underprivileged children. See what I'm saying? And then you get around one of them and all and say, you know, say, I'm broke. They say, oh, you want some money, man? Um, you call this number here. This is the, the underprivileged students. And it's call this number here. Say what? Say, you know, you just go in a room and you take a whole bunch of drugs. You know what I'm saying? And then you get paid. Now you hear where I'm coming from here. You see, all the stuff that is that they test on disease in this country is tested out on high school students, all black, at 3 o'clock in Atlanta, Georgia. And this program goes all the way back to the Atlanta child murders. Now, I remember now, in 1996, I was in Atlanta. I was doing a lecture in Atlanta. The woman, one of the, one of the, one of the, uh, what's up? Uh, little spaceship thing going on right there. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right here. Yes. Right here. Right here. Your little cable thing in the back right there. Um, in Atlanta, Atlanta I, I think it said it's the last time I was here. The Atlanta child murder woman. One of the, one of the, one of the, this, this, no, no, this is the reception of this. This is what it is. This is after. Yeah. You know. About time for a 2,000 model. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Atlanta, uh, uh, the Atlanta, the woman, that, that one of the women who children was, who child was killed in the Atlanta child murder, came up to me in one of my lectures and was telling me about how her child was not dead. He took her to see her child before the child died, and the child looked 90 years old when she went to see the child, and the child was about eight or nine years old. And, and then the movie Red Ink came out, which was a cheap movie about, about the Atlanta child murders, and the guy said the same thing, that the children in there looked like they were 90 years old. So they're doing the experiment, the interferon, none experiments, and all this type of thing. Well, that same program is the CDC program. And they got black children right now that's up under that. Which leads us to this. And what's going on here? Now, in order to understand this, you've got to get Manchurian candidate, and you must ask yourself this. Frank Sinatra put the movie out in 1963, and they always do things before they go into what they're going to do to you. But in the last six, seven, ten, or well, last ten years, they always put a movie out. So, they, so before they had the John Muhammad DC sniper, they put out the movie, when Wesley Snipes played the same DC sniper called Liberty Stand Still. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, you, you know that the guy who trained John Muhammad to shoot was the same guy who shot Khaled out in California. With the, out at the prison in California, you know, when he was at that, at that college uh, back in 94. Same guy. Because they, they, they flashed that he was trained the Pentagon, said he was an expert marksman when they caught John Muhammad, but then NBC News came on and said that we don't have no records of him or the Army training him at all. But he was trained by the same guy who shot Khalid Muhammad. You see what I'm saying? And this is the linking into the Israeli Mossad. Got something to do with them Jews. See what I'm saying? Because it was when, when, when Khalid was shot, a Jew came up to the rest to the to the to the hospital because they beat this guy to an inch of his life. Now remember we talked about MK Ultra. They say but when Carter got shot, they grabbed this guy and they put every kind of can of whip ass you, a person can humanly think of. For them minutes they had him on that ground, they put every kind of whip ass a human could think of on this nigga's ass. 
And they said it was almost like he was in another world. He couldn't even feel it. And they beat him. To, they said they was inventing shit on him. And they said he couldn't even feel it. We talk about MK Ultra. MK Ultra. Y'all alright? Yes, sir. Now, so John Muhammad, before the movie came out, Wesley Snipes came out with the movie. Same scenario. Before, and also the guy who, who was the guy on the TV crying. Because they killed a kid. I mean, you know how many damn kids on milk cartons every day? And this kid, they shot a kid and this old black man up on, on the moose. Moose crying. It is a crime. First of all, this is a paramilitary operation and you never show your subordinates, show them crying if this guy is over if he's the head of the sheriff, you never show that to the example to the deputies. Right. That's military. Even if your ass is hurting, you got to show strength even if you about to die. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You never show that. You understand where I'm coming from here? So him crying, but come to find out the chief moose was in the same outfit as John Muhammad. Mm -hmm. <coughs> in the military. The games, the games, the games. Now, going on, you had what was this summer, Denzel ends up playing Frank Sinatra's role in the movie Manchurian Candidate again, and it's not by mistake. And somebody even said that this brother looks a little like Denzel in this picture. You want to get a picture of that right now? You see? The sister in Atlanta said, well, that's a nice looking nigga. And you know, I wouldn't know. You claim, I would not think all guys are ugly to me. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's healthy. In this day and age, that's healthy. All guys are ugly to me. You see them, that's healthy. You see what I'm saying? You see, I'm safe. You can be alone with me. You see what I'm saying? But they got him right here. These pictures of him. Somebody said, that looked like Denzel. You see what I'm saying? Educated, mom and daddy, live in Africa. Now, the movie comes out, and here comes Wesley Snipes. Because Wesley Snipes puts out a movie called Unstoppable. And in the movie, he is a, is, is, a, is, a, uh, is a special ops military agent that receives a Section 8. <laughs> but he's shot with this serum by some type of CIA people, and whatever they suggest to him, it becomes a reality. And this movie comes out, it, everything always comes out at the same time. Then the movie comes out, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, where the guy goes up in the court and they grab the sheriff, and they grab the gun out of the, the, the deputy, and goes up in the court, grab the guns out of the deputy, deputy and shoot up, the court, and shoot up and shoot the person who's lying on him. Two weeks before this actually happened, the movie comes out this way, comes out. Now, now listen to me now, the movie comes out of the same reenactment. Two weeks later, it happens in real life. The same time the movie is coming, I gotta see the timeline. The same time the movie comes out, is the same time he has a hung jury in the first trial, which he was almost acquitted. This guy here, Brian Nichols. Now, some of you Negroes are, 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 are affiliated with the criminal justice system. <laughs> if you live long enough, you are affiliated with it. See what I'm saying? Uh, now correct me if I'm wrong. If they acquit you in a jury trial, or they have a home jury, in a jury trial, Correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't it take anywhere from three to six months before you get another yeah. trial? Yeah. Does anybody think it's strange that this trial 
would start in two weeks. <laughs> Hell, it took Michael Jackson damn near a year to go. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's unusual. Uh, rescue me if I'm wrong here now. If they have a hung jury in a trial, it takes about anywhere from a minimum of three months to six months. But two weeks is unheard of. Now we need to find out, was this rape victim white or black? Anybody know? Does anybody know that yet? They, they, they hide their identity to that. Does anybody truly know whether it's a white or a black girl? Anybody know? They never say. Either way, what I'm trying to say here is, you don't go back to court with a trial. To get another jury, a new jury, in two weeks is unheard of. You understand what I'm saying? We're talking about something that's a setup. Now follow me on this. You got the movies that explain this thing. They said when he overpowered the deputy sheriff, the woman, his words were, because he's cooperating now, that he felt like an adequate soldier. They said, well, wait a minute. The guy was never in the military. What is he using military terms? When he beat the reporter over the head and stole his car, they asked him why did he do that. He said that was a civilian casualty. <laughs> why is he using military terms and he never was in the military? MKUltra, mind control. You see what I'm saying? Hell, if the movement from Manchuria and Canada came out in 1963, can you imagine what kind of MK Ultra or mind control they can put on a person in 2005? They said when he went into the judge's chamber, the judge had a secret door in the chamber. He happened to know where the secret door was and went in and shot the judge. Well, first of all, that was spiritual. Let me explain about this cracker here. Everybody say he's the fair and all that stuff. He crossed the line in the time of the great mother because there was a black woman that had seven children. And she was poor and I think she had about seven men or whatever type thing. And anyway, he felt appalled by this. And anyway, there was a beating death and one of her children ended up dead. He didn't give a damn about the child. He said, look, I'll let you go. But you have to agree to get your tubes tied and get sterilized. Now that's crossing the line. But see, that's that Nazi shit. That's that euthanasia. That's that extermination. This cracker here. See, you, we are all crying about a whole bald head cracker. That's a judge. He don't even get to sit on that bitch if he's a white man. If he ain't down with some doggone ruling white supremacist mentality. You understand what I'm saying? Don't even, you know, I want to hear nothing about the, the deputy sheriff was shot. Is it, anybody ever been down to the jail? This guy was a jailer. Anybody ever been down to the jail? Yeah. It is a humiliating experience. Not because you locked up, it's because they treat you like a low dog. Uh -huh. Beneath the animal. You see what I'm saying? And those deputy sheriff are trained. Yeah. They even have a certain hatred. You would have to to lock up people every day. So we don't give a damn about that either. Because my point here is, hey, Negro, one plus one is two. Never run behind a nigga with a gun. You know what I'm saying? I had a homeboy in high school figured that shit out. He graduated high school with my brother, got on police force, and every damn time something went down, that nigga would hide behind, <laughs> hide behind the building. <laughs> <laughs> every time. So they, they finally got tired of that nigga about two, three years later. But every time no fool. <laughs> that nigga hide behind buildings. <laughs> One time they told him to go pick up this guy to take him to the hospital. Yeah, that's some small towns, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the boy fight shit. You go in, the oh, nigga, they, they didn't have no ambulance, so the hospital called the police force and said they're going to pick up this guy to take him to the hospital. And he got close and found out what the guy was, this gay guy down there had AIDS. He turned right around and hauled ass. <laughs> this was like 1982. He didn't know what that shit was. He was like, oh, I ain't going down there to pick even the fucking rescue squad turned around. <laughs> anyway, going back, this guy 
shoots up the thing, he shoots this judge. They can't find him. They don't have no whereabouts the way he is. He gets on Marta train, which is the braille system, goes up in the bulkhead and finds a U.S. Customs agent who just so happened to be Homeland Security, because U.S. Customs was taken over by Homeland Security a year ago, or two years ago, and kills a Homeland Security agent. Then goes to a woman's apartment and waits for her, although she don't know who he is and he don't know who he waiting for, supposedly. <laughs> and texts this woman captain for what, 11 hours or 7 or 8 hours? And she, a mysterious thing happened. He's in there taking a shower and let her, and she's sitting up in the place and don't even try to leave when he's taking the shower. And in so many words, he lets this woman go out and call the cops. They didn't know where he was. You ain't figured it out yet? This woman was the deprogrammer. She was the woman who deprogrammed the mind control. She was the agent you understand what I'm saying? And that was a part of her job. He went on a killing rampage and they took out who they wanted to take out. They wanted to make the point, but I'll tell you what the point is in a few minutes. And then after that, they say, now deprogram him. Because seeing to me now, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. You say, the, the excuse is, he's supposed to kill up some people because they say he's about to lose this case. That just starts. And the prosecutor that day, the white woman, don't even mysteriously don't show up. Remember this white woman that's supposed to be one of the witnesses or whatever this thing is, that mysteriously don't show up? About like them Jews, them 4,000 Jews that mysteriously didn't show up on September 11th. that just so happened to be on a building <laughs> on a, 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 across the way looking at a telescope and watching the whole shit as it go down. <laughs> Know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the head financial people yeah. stay home that day. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand where I'm coming from here? So this woman don't show up. But now let's get my wrong. They're saying that he he go on a killing rampage and kill up everybody in his back because he don't want to go to jail. But yet sign up for the damn death penalty, mm -hmm. which is worse than the degree of what you say you killing for in the first place. You know what I'm saying at all? You go there, if you're a sickness, and they give you a little shock treatment and shit. You got to sign up for wherever you go or whatever. It's that thing. But this, you're trying to see the mentality here. We supposed to believe this shit. The woman was a deprogrammer. And then they're going to throw this little shit about an old book, some old cracker rope that just so happened to be popular now, telling you about God. Now, my Lana Karenga was right when he said that. You should never let the white man ever mention anything about morality to you. Are you out your mind as much as you have been an international bandit and have broken every law on the planet that even the devil, mythological devil saying, hey, this motherfucker, I'm a boy scout compared to this crowd. <laughs> you know, I got, I got a pitchfork. The only thing I can do in the Bible is to suggest a motherfucker to fuck up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this cracker done broke every law on the planet that we got to invent a new mythological devil to characterize this person. And yet we don't let a white man tell us about morality. So anyway, she they got this whole song and dance story about this guy. And, uh, but it was interesting what he said after she deprogrammed him and he looked at TV. He was even watching, give him a little boob too. He looking at TV and stuff on TV and he says, that's not me. His parents say that's not him. All the friends saying it's not him. You understand what I'm saying? MK Ultra. Mind control. Now part of the mind, you know, he probably got a phone call. First of all, the man was in jail since August. You know what I'm saying? And remember I think a couple of years ago I was talking about it in the 90s, about this sister. Uh, this sister, she got a friend. And she said that the friend said that one night in jail, he was in prison, they just came and got him. Yeah. And he didn't know where he, he said, then he woke up the next day in his, uh, in back in his room. But uh, they grew up together, was in the first grade together, and she asked him how old he was, and 
he, he didn't even know how old he was after he got out. He was making up names and stuff, making up updates. So my point is, this guy was in jail since August. You know what I'm saying? All the programming. Now, to give you another information on this, you got to understand this. About 12 years ago, 12 or 13 years ago, no, 2000, no, 1991, right around the same time as the first Persian Gulf War. There's a movie out called The Jacket. Go watch it. It's in the theaters now, called The Jacket. Get Unstoppable, Wesley Snipes, that's one you need to watch. Get another movie called Unspeakable. I don't know, it's a, movie, a white movie. That's the one you need to watch, and there's a movie called The Jacket that's out in theaters. Go see it. But there was a guy about 10, back in 19, right during the time of the first Persian Gulf War, is in a mental institution in Atlanta. He goes again. He goes to evaluation. He tells the people in evaluation, if I get out, I'm going to kill up the whole town. <laughs> <laughs> they let him out within an hour of him saying that. <laughs> The next morning, he goes to Perimeter Mall, an all-white exclusive mall, and shoot by four or five white people. That same story that's happening here. All of a sudden, this is a surprise. A black man. When they asked him, why did he do it? He said, I got an implant in my head. And they all laughed at him. This is 1991. Calvin Brady was his name. He said, I have an implant in my head. And it's the same thing as the Manchurian candidate, where Denzel digs an implant out of itself, which means that 90% of you to go in a hospital, you probably implanted, because you all love the damn doctors. You know what I'm saying? And every time you get a toothache, you run it up to some cracker. You know what I'm saying? So he has an implant in his head. Now what is going on? The key here from the John Muhammad and everything that's going on up until this particular guy here, um, oh, what's his name, uh, Brian Nichols, which happened to be last name Terry Nichols and all this kind of thing, they need a new face on terrorism. Now, the, mess, so the first thing, I'm going back, this all has to do with Iraq and everything. All of the army and service people are overseas. That means that the army bases are now are being manned by foreigners. UN, whatever type soldiers or whatever, Russians and all this kind of thing, which it told you even, your boy told you before he died, that they got to have some people don't have an allegiance to you, don't know who you are, so when they start locking up your mom and daddy, even on the white level, they won't have an allegiance, they just lock them up because of the simple fact that they don't know you. So everything over here in the army bases is foreigners. And they said, why? When one of the guys out in California was out in Las Vegas said, why are you here? Russian agents told him this a couple of months ago. He said, we're here for the insurgents. Which means an uprising. Now, going back to this particular part, that means that they're talking about domestic terrorism. And I think I told you before last time I was here that they did all this work, Bush and them did all of this stuff based on terrorism abroad, but the re-election meant that they were going to deal with terrorism at home in 2005. Domestic terrorism. But in order to do this, the goals and objectives is they have to have a new face of terrorism. That's why Denzel Washington is the terrorist in the movie. That's why Wesley Snipes. Anybody saw this movie Unstoppable? Yeah. Uh, what was the woman that was close to him? Wasn't it a white woman? Yeah. That had his back and was looking out for him and was his well-being? About like this white woman that became this motherfucking man, black man's friend. You know what I'm saying? And deprogrammed. You gotta understand what's going on here. So the new face of terrorism based on the MK Ultra, and you gotta watch out, <coughs> this is the tip of the iceberg. They're gonna have all types of things, but it was interesting because the reporter down in Atlanta kept saying, those people, she was talking about, supposed to be criminals, 
But she kept saying those people. Now you know what that word means when they say those people. They're talking about us. You see. And it's not by mistake that this is going on the same time the Michael Jackson trial is going on. You see. Time out for Negroes. So the domestic terrorism and the domestic terror that they're talking about is black people. And it's not by mistake that John Muhammad was light-skinned and this brother happened to be dark-skinned. You see what I'm saying? I said if it's a dark-skinned brother, you know. And why is it interesting that this brother here has some hair on his head because this was two days after they captured him. But they showed him with a bald head. They had, a, they had two pictures. One he had hair on his head and one they showed him with a bald head. Why? Because they're dealing with the psychological aspect that 90% of black men now wear what? A bald head. And especially the ones that's this color. The darker skinned one, somehow the bald head goes with them compared to the light skin. And they look kind of nasty. Light skin motherfucker, you know, with a ball in his head, you know, look kind of nasty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. So the, the ball head, when they kind of go together. So they made sure, they made sure that, uh, 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 they showed him with a ball head. They showed this picture of, uh, a picture of him with the hair on his head that was taken from the mug shot or the prison shot or the jail shot and then they showed him with the bald head. It ain't got nothing to do to say, well, he might shave off his hair. No. Hell, he ain't got, he, his hair ain't nothing to knee high to a grasshopper on this. You know what I'm saying? That's not what's going on here. It's the sin, the image of the black man that is in question when it comes to terrorism. <coughs> That's 90% of all your black men from a certain demographic of age with a bald head. You see what I'm saying? This is what's going on here, and this is the domestic terrorism, and it's just starting. And it's the same MK Ultra. I want you to get a movie called Ella Enchanted. Ella Enchanted is on Stars Network right now. Now this movie is a movie about a white girl that's Vivica A. Fox, the black girl, is a fairy godmother, and she puts her under a spell when she's born. And any time they say something, she has to be obedient and do what she says. But what is interesting in the movie, the movie is a microcosm of the black community, because in the movie they have giants, ogres, and elves. And this evil king comes to, 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 to rule, who happened to kill his brother for the kingdom, and is also raising the, the, the brother he kills, son, which is his nephew, which is the whole Horace set Osiris drama. And anyway, he outlaws the ogres, the elves, and the giants. The giants are peaceful like people that everybody's now scared of based on propaganda that they're evil. So what he does is he makes the giants into the field niggas and they have to go outside and they have to work hard in the field. The ogres are really the real powerful warriors, and they just say, fuck, we just gonna kill all the humans because, you know, we've been vilified. And then the elves are the house niggas. The only thing they can do to gain acceptance in the, in the society is to sing, dance, tell jokes, and entertain white folks. See what I'm saying? It's a microcosm of the black community. Ella, at the particular time, She's obedient because that's what happens with you when you get in religion. When your spirit tell you, no, this is some bullshit. But because of some doctrine that somebody has given to you and indoctrinated you into, you peaceful. You see what I'm saying? But yet, he can decide the time to go to war and you'll send your child over to any person that look like you. You see what I'm saying? Like these black people in Iraq and kill up some people under the guise of the Lord and it's just and it's righteous. You see what I'm saying? And yet you're killing up babies and children and all, all because the white man said it because in our minds the white man is God. You see what I'm saying? So get that movie Ella Enchanted. Y'all all right? Mm -hmm. Y'all all right? Yeah. Okay. Well, how old is it? Okay, you cutting it? Yeah, okay, yeah, you cutting it? Okay, you already did it. Okay. All right.
Let's go on. Um, let's go on. Uh, so now you're also going to get that particular movie that's interesting here about him. His mother and father lives in Africa. So this guy is a little, he has some type of conscious background. You see what I'm saying? He has some type of conscious background, which uh, has a lot to do with, um, has, has a lot to do with the people, the person that they chose. Um, this is very key also, uh, what is also going on. Okay, moving right along. It's interesting here because they got a movie, they got the, they got the History Channel, which should be the World War II channel. Every time I see it, some damn tanks and Hitler. Should be the World War II channel. The history channel and every damn hour is something on there about World War II. And they said, well, fuck it. We can't take it no more. This is what we about. So they done created a military channel. You see what I'm saying? But they got the history channel, history international channel, and uh, the biography channel. All of it ain't nothing but the World War II channel. And what they, and if it ain't that, it's World War I. <laughs> They're telling you that this man is a military freak. Very key that you understand that law or what's going on. But there are alternatives. Y'all all right? Yeah. They are, there are alternatives. A few other things here. Um, we need to tap into, uh, we need to tap into, and I should, I should, I should have Xerox a copy of this. This is a book we need to tap into because you know you have your Omex. And like uh, uh, Devil Blair said, your Omex still exists. They just renamed them Aztecs. You see what I'm saying? So that whole Omex name is, they got this mysterious pyramids and all this thing, but yet they don't know who built them. Every time they mysterious and they don't know who built something, you know it's black. You got what? Just what you, you do? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go into the break. Because they got the food ready. You can do that. You can come in and first come access the book and the CDD, do the CDs and the pictures. And then we're going to start it back up. Because we got a lot to cover. A lot to cover. We just starting up. A lot to cover. You know, we got a whole visual thing we got to deal with. Pulaski, whoever's asking about the Pablo, yeah. Yeah, 85th Pulaski, yeah. I know they, they distribute it here. They sell it a lot in New York, but they distribute it in LA, uh, Illinois. Uh, distributed where is that? Uh, uh, Deerfield, Deerfield, Illinois. Yeah, Deerfield, Illinois. So, yeah. Oh, that's Palo Viejo is the name of it. Okay, we back now. There's a movie that came out called Constantine. It's still in the theaters. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shoot. Let me put this on. Yeah. Uh, hold on one minute. Okay. All right. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Gotta put him up. Okay. Okay. There's a movie called Constantine. It's in the theaters now. I'm, I'm saying about the movie because, uh, because um, it gives rise to something that I already know. Part of the information coming from the Constantine movie came from uh, the animated Spawn movie. The animated Spawn movie. The series that came on HBO between from 1997 to 99. The third, uh, you can get it on video, the third one really dropped all the science. Which is uh, dropped all the science, which is saying, which would later on be encapsulated in the movie Constantine. The point I want you to make it to, to understand is there's a war going on. The war in heaven that they talked about, and you, you, you get a lot of your biblical works uh, and, and, and the different uh, um, Judeo-Christian or whatever in what we call modern-day organized religion, that war spans well into the, it's ongoing. And that war is a battle of supremacy. You just been taught to load or look down on the other side, which would be 
what you would call your dark side, or which would be called the demon realm, and all of this. See, what you're going to find out when you study the ancient texts, and then the best way to, to be sure of things is, you can't take other people's sides. Like take for instance, um, I was hearing a tape today and they was talking about that these white people came up and started Hinduism. Hinduism, and Hinduism, if you've ever studied it, is very advanced. And the guy said that they started Sanskrit. Now Sanskrit is one of the oldest, oldest languages on the earth. You only have several, only have a few major ancient languages, Metaneta being one of them. Sanskrit is another one that's uh, what you call your very ancient languages. You see what I'm saying? Arabic, Hebrew, and all that, those are very later languages, so I don't want to bust your religious bubble. <laughs> but they're very late. As a matter of fact, it is even to say that the word Hebrew is a Greek word. Got quiet on that. <laughs> And you must understand this and all, when you're dealing with these things, you are grown people now. So this means all of this Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all of those were never historical people. There was sublime mythology. The problem here is, about 2,000 years ago, the later day races. In this particular case, it wasn't even the white man. It was our own selves dealing with spin-off groups of African nations that spin off, spin off out of Kemet and out of the ancient world that came in and tried to make themselves a unique type of culture, historicalized sublime mythology. Solomon is Osiris. Sheba is Isis. Abraham is Amun-Ra. It's actually Brahma in India, if you take the, the descramble the words, you see what I'm saying? Uh, you descramble the words, all of these particular ones that you are thinking are historical people are nothing but the retelling of the same sublime mythology that our people told for thousands of years. It's just when you historicalize these things, you get into trouble. You understand what I'm saying? And why is it the, last, the, the, the three major religions Christianity, Judaism, and Islam happen to have the first five bowls of books of Moses comprised in them. And yet it's supposed to be some new found religion that wasn't on the earth before in the first five books of Moses, which is taken from your hermetic text. And you know you got your whole uh, um, your Psalms, book of Psalms is nothing but the teachings of Menomope and later on regurgitated the Psalms, if you look at the Psalms, the book of Psalms, and look at Akhenaten's hymn,